What's going on, you gamers? Here we are back with some more Aliens Fireteam Elite, and today I'm going to be going over the Season 1 weapons that we've all been given. So, if you want to know what the Season 1 weapons are for Aliens Fireteam Elite and how good they are, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls, as always for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon. But for today I'm here to show you the weapons that we've been given, free of charge, for the Season 1 of Fireteam Elite. Now everyone gets these, you don't have to worry about paying for DLC and such, there's going to be seasonal updates with this game and they're given out free of charge. Obviously there will be some paid DLC and such, but these right here are given to us free, so you should have these now after the update. So going over the weapons, we've been given the L33 Pike, which is a single shot sniper rifle. Just down here, the Type 88 Heavy Assault Rifle, which is a nice automatic firing rifle. Jumping over to our handguns, and we've got a very different one, and that's the N79 EVA Laser. And last, but by no means least, the heavy, just over here, the L59 Minigun. An absolute beast of a heavy minigun that only, at the moment, the demolishers can use. So kicking it off, and I'm going to start with the Type 88 Heavy Assault Rifle. Now this is a really nice looking gun. It is really, really nice to look at, and I think it handles quite well. I like the fire rate, it seems bang on, and the damage is really, really nice. So 171 damage, the fire rate is 8.8, .8, and the magazine is 45, with a max ammo of 450. It's not bad at all. It's got 5% effective range, 5% effective range and 5% fire rate. Its final perk is 1% fire rate and range on hit. This effect stacks up to 5 times and resets on reload. Now I must admit it hasn't got much fall off so something else there could probably have been a little bit nicer. I would probably say a little bit of weak point damage but we can't ask for everything and it's not bad all round. The only thing with this it's got a lot of competition. The assault rifle slot is really, really good. So you have to make sure you're using a weapon that's gonna dish out a lot of damage. Now luckily this one does do the job. It dishes out a lot of damage and it's a lot of fun to use. However, be a little bit wary of it. If you're after those headshots, if you're in a team without someone who can help your stability and such, say for example a medic, you may well struggle using this. You're going to see the pattern on it is quite... That's without obviously touching the analog. But if you have a little look at the fire, it isn't quite as focused as some of the other weapons. You can, however, just obviously use the analog and it's not too bad. But the further away it is, as you can see, the pattern is a little bit all over the place. This, this to me is a bit of a spray and pray but the attachments and such, and like I said, if you're using a dock in your team, this one can be a really nice chunky damage one to use for Dan Corridors. If it was out in open spaces, probably not the best gun, but all in all, still a nice gun to have in your arsenal. Although, like I said, I wouldn't say it's the best in slot for a rifle, it is a nice one to swap to from time to time to mow down those corridors of enemies. So, jumping over to the N79 EVA Laser. Now this one right here is very, very different as I take off the attachments to show you its base stats. It's, there's nothing else like this in the game currently and I thought it would be ideal for end end game. So basically going into the insane missions or extreme, I thought this would work out really, really well as a backup because it's going to have infinite ammo. If you have a little look, the main thing about this, it comes with an internal battery that you cannot replace. A long lasting battery that provides effective infinite ammunition. Firing the weapon generates a large amount of heat and when fired rapidly can cause the weapon to overheat, entering a forced cooldown period to prevent internal damage. So think of it like your reload function, except you don't want to be reloading at all. So if you can get away without using it, you really will want to. Now looking at the base stats, I thought this gun was pretty good, I'm not going to lie. The damage is 504, the reload speed is a little bit on the high side of 2.5, the fire rate is 2.5 and, and the magazine is 100 with a weak point damage of 250. Obviously you don't have to worry about the ammo and magazine because this is infinite. It is a laser, you can use it as much as you want. 
I really wanted to spec into this. I was looking forward to chucking this on the Phalanx class and just even if I need to use it as a backup in those tough missions, know that I'd never run out of ammo and to be able to get some nice headshot damage, yeah, I thought it would work really well. I was very wrong. The stability's great, the accuracy's great. That right there does take up a slot, so I already think that's a pretty much a downfall of the gun. But even more so than that, when you actually use it, so if we bop back to the hangar again, you have this little charge up time. And even though it doesn't look like much, if I keep spamming it, so after four shots, it's going to overheat. Meaning what you're trying to do, you're probably going to do one, two, three headshots, give it a second, it's going to pop down one, two, three headshots, same again, like that. But in the heat of battle, it's very, very hard. And most times you'll just find that you do end up going into this accidentally and having that overheat, which is really annoying and not something you can kind of count for. If you do tend to do that, what you want to do is pretty much swap off but you can't do that either so you have to stay in that animation also when like i said you're doing that often because of how the aliens in this game move they'll jump from side to side meaning you're gonna miss that headshot anyway as it is at the moment i don't recommend this weapon in the slightest if you've had any luck with it let me know i would probably say don't spend your money on this because these weapons do cost a pretty penny i believe it's about 10,000 credits each from the armory so if you want them go and grab them from there this is the one i would pick up last if i could to complete my collection now obviously bopping down to the perks and i must admit i haven't leveled this up i've only unlocked it recently but it's not going to change my views on it you get 5% heat regen, 5% charge time, 5% heat regen, and again, just down the bottom here, you get 5% charge time and weak point damage on kill for five seconds. This effect does not stack. So you get a little bit more charge time and you get a little bit more on your damage for your weak point. But overall, you've lost out on that slot. It's still gonna be a bit iffy. I don't think it's the best to use unless you really need a gun that you're gonna have infinite ammo with as a backup next up and we're going over the l33 pike sniper rifle now this is just an absolute beast there's not going to be much in the game that hits like this does for headshot damage it is just out and out gonna crack anything if you have a little look the damage is 1350 as base with a 300 percent weak point damage it's just ridiculously strong if you are absolutely amazing as a sniper, this may well be the thing for you. However, again, I found it worked a lot better out in the open, same those settings when you're taking on the simps and such, which are a little bit few and far between in this, unfortunately. However, it can work in the right hands. If you're great as recon, you may well want to do this because the damage you'll be pumping out will be ridiculous. Just over here for the perks, you've got 5% accuracy, 5% accuracy, 5% accuracy, and finally, 1% weak point damage and stability on hit for three seconds. This effect stacks five times. Again, a bit more weak point damage, not the most in the world, but you don't need it. It's already got the damage there. If you're a headshot specialist, this may well be the one for you, as long as you can put something in your other slot to take on things that are close range and when there's a lot of them because you don't want to be completely overwhelmed. But if I go over and it shoots, as you can see, this one hasn't got a sight. You'll probably at least have a 25 or a 50% sight on it. The main thing you're going to notice, make sure it's a headshot because you are going to have to reload. You don't want to be spamming it because if you're spamming it, then I have no idea where that bullet is aiming, but it ain't going to be aiming where you want it to aim. So make sure you zoom in. Make sure you're aiming, take the tap, get the headshot. Definitely for someone who is really good at accuracy and probably someone who plays sniper a lot in games. If you don't, I probably wouldn't recommend this one either. Right, so last but definitely not least, and I would say this one right here is a lot of fun to use. Pretty much the daddy of the guns, the L59 minigun. That accuracy is not too bad, stability on the low side, 
the damage is chunky, 188 with a fire rate of 10.5. So the damage is higher than your smart gun, but the fire rate is a lot lower. Also, the weak point damage is higher, meaning you'll be able to do big, chunkier numbers. As you can see, the damage fall off isn't too bad, meaning you'll be able to hit things a little bit further away. If we jump over to the perks, you get 5% charge time, 5% fire rate, 5% charge time, and finally, 0.5% fire rate on shots. This effect stacks 20 times, meaning you're gonna get 10% extra fire rate. This gun is all about that single target damage and clearing the ad that's in front of you. In the right build, this can actually be a complete monster. Its downside is it is so, so ammo hungry. I don't think you could get away with this on later stages. If you can, let me know. I would very much struggle, I think, to use this because you're just going to really struggle with that ammo consumption. But it is a very fun gun to use all the way up to probably intense you'll be able to get away with it i'm not sure after that but then again i haven't tried on it anything above that if anyone has let me know in the comments the other thing you'll notice with this at the very start the pattern of bullets is absolutely all over the place it kind of gets better as you warm it up and it becomes more focused meaning those later bullets are really good and will do a significant chunk of change to whatever you're aiming at when you first start you're probably going to miss a few of them because the bullet pattern is really, really all over the place, like I said, but it does focus as you go on and works really nicely on those tougher enemies if you've got a really nice build going on. But like I said, make sure you're using a lot of things with ammo on it, definitely on the magazine and wherever you can fit it into your build because you're definitely going to need that. With this, it is one of the more fun guns to use but just make sure you can use it a little bit because otherwise you're going to be out of ammo before you can make it to the ammo drops. Right, well you gamers, that's just my views on this. Let me know in the comments if you think anything different. I do like the weapons they provided, but I honestly feel there's something you may just play for a little while and then switch them out for others. Some of them are fun, some of them are quite nice to use, but they'll be really hard to fit into end game play activity, I feel. Let me know what you guys and girls think. I may have missed something somewhere, but for myself, I really enjoyed playing with these, but they'll probably go back into the box and I'll switch them out for something else. As always, guys and girls, for all things gaming, for all things Xbox, take care. I'll see you on the next day.